It's Monday. Welcome back to another Monday Minute. These are a series of quick tips that I've been sharing with you all. We've been working our way through a series of Lightroom tips. I have tons of them. You can find them all at photorec.tv. Today, I want to talk about personalizing and tweaking Lightroom to make it work best for you. As I said, in this quick tip, I want to show you how to really dial Lightroom in, both customize it so it looks better and it works better for you. All right, the first thing I want to look at is the identity plate. This is the little bit of information that sits here in the top left corner. You can right click on it to edit the identity plate. Now, you want to go to Personalized, and that allows you to put in whatever text you want. And you can change its size and its color all right here very easily. You can even change each individual word if you wanted to. But even more fun is the fact that you can go to a graphical identity plate. I've already done that under PhotoRec TV. And now you can see that it loads this little graphic I created in Photoshop with a script of my name and my logo for PhotoRec TV. But notice that you can even save individual identity plates allowing you to easily switch back and forth between different ones. Now over on the right hand side you can customize the color and the font and the size used for the modules and you have a color for active module and non-active module. That's pretty nice so you should make those match I think. Now over here talking about those modules notice I only have three displayed. Right clicking gives you this little option drop down, put a check mark next to those that you use frequently, and put a check, remove a check mark from those that you don't use frequently. Uh, please know I print very often. I just don't need the print module to do that. Library development map is where I spend most of my time, so that's the modules that I want displayed. Now let's move on to the develop module and talk about how to customize the panels. So right clicking on any one of these panels gives you the ability to say customize develop panel. This brings up this little box. You've got check marks and you've got grabby tool. Check marks means that you can remove it so it won't show any longer over there on the right. I don't recommend this because at some point in the future you might be following along on a really cool tutorial and they say, hey, go into your calibration panel and tweak the, tweak the reds. You're going to be looking for the calibration panel and you're going to be cussing, wondering where it is. Why don't you have it? Forgetting that at some point in the past, somebody told you to hide it because you never use it. So I don't recommend hiding these, but I do recommend putting them in order that you like to often work through these things. For instance, split toning, I don't use it too often. I put it down towards the bottom so that I don't see it unless I'm going all the way down to calibration. It's just kind of out of sight, out of mind, but it's still right down there. Now, you can also turn solo mode on. And that's just a very easy way, especially if you have less screen real estate, to be working on only one panel at a time. So I'm working in the basic panel. I've made some adjustments. And now I'm ready to go on to the tone curve. As soon as I click to open tone curve, I close the basic panel. Lightroom does that for me as part of solo mode. Now we're going to move on to this little gray bar that sits at the bottom here. There's a small down pointing triangle on the right hand side of that that allows you to show or hide a bunch of options. For instance, flagging, rating. See them start to appear over here on the left hand side and they're just going to keep going. Navigate. Slideshow is just a triangle that starts the slideshow. These are all buttons that allow me to rate or flag the images or start the slideshow or navigate to the next image in the group, however you want. I don't turn these on because I use the keyboard shortcuts. Flagging, I know those. Uh, X for rejecting, a P for picking, a U for unflagging. Rating, I use the one, two, three, four, five on the keyboard or zero to remove. Navigate, that's just the arrow keys. Those are all so much faster than trying to press right there. And the more that's on the screen, the more distracting it is, and the more likely that you might accidentally press these buttons. The one exception to that is I used to accidentally get into soft proofing from time to time. The keyboard shortcut is S. And when you get into soft proofing, everything changes. 
And you can see there's a white box. And I could never remember, what did I just accidentally hit that gets me into soft proofing? So I can see that I've got a check mark. I've put soft proofing on. I can simply check it here. I know now that it's the S key that toggles it on and off. But until you remember that, it's kind of annoying figuring out how to get out of soft proofing. And I do leave my little views on, because this is a great way to see a split screen before and after. So I leave that on because honestly, I haven't remembered the keyboard shortcut for that just yet. Hey, if you found this useful, give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button along with that little bell. So you'll be notified of future tips, tricks, how-to videos, travel videos, and here's some nice drone footage. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.